Antarctica's Doomsday Glacier is cracking at whirring speed and could have devastating consequences for us all. Here's what you need to know. The Thwaites Eastern Ice Shelf, which acts as a dam to slow the flow of ice off Antarctica into the ocean, has a series of fractures spanning almost the entire shelf that could break it up within five years. The shelf sits at the front of one-third of the mass of Thwaites Glacier, forebodingly known as the Doomsday Glacier, for its capacity to release massive sea level rises should it melt. At the moment, though it is already thinning, the shelf's leading edge is pinned in place by an underwater ridge, which means its ice flow speed is a third of that seen in the glacier's western side. However, a presentation at a meeting at the American Geophysical Union, cited by the BBC, explained that the shelf is likely to become uncoupled from the ridge very soon. And even if that doesn't occur, developing fractures in the ice shelf will almost certainly break it up, which will release large sections of the glacier behind it into the ocean. Glaciologist Aaron Pettit explained to Science Magazine that the shelf is like a windshield with a series of slowly opening cracks. You're like, I should get a new windshield, and one day, bang, there are a million other cracks there, she said. Science Magazine adds that the collapse of the entire Thwaites Glacier, which some researchers think is only centuries away, would raise the global sea level by 65 centimeters. And because Thwaites occupies a deep basin into which neighboring glaciers would flow, this could eventually lead to the loss of the entire West Antarctic ice sheet, causing 3.3 meters of global sea level rise. Of course, as bad as that news is, an apparent mirror image of the story can be found up towards the North Pole, too. With a huge hole discovered in the Arctic's oldest and thickest ice last month, and what was previously thought to be the most stable ice in the region. According to a study published in the Nature Geoscience Journal, there was a powerful storm north of Ellesmere Island in May of 2020, and a long narrow crack formed on May 14th. By May 15th, the crack had formed into a polynya, an area of open water in a region that is normally ice covered, around 30 kilometers wide and 100 kilometers long. With ice around 4 meters thick, this arctic ice is predicted to be the last to remain in place during summer melting seasons, but the study emphasizes its surprising vulnerability to cracks. In the short term, newly open areas of ocean water can create ideal conditions for life, but as ice moves offshore, species like walruses and seabirds lose access and it becomes so hot they can't survive. On May 26, 2020, this particular polynya rapidly closed, but the study's lead author warned in a press release that polynyas may become more common or larger in the future, because as ice gets thinner, it's easier to move around, and the study itself points out that previous storms in the same area had caused smaller cracks, which may be because the ice has already thinned. That study details how warming makes ice thinner and thus more vulnerable to cracking and how for the same reason the ice is increasingly less likely to reform. But a previous study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences explains more fundamentally how ice melting is a vicious feedback loop. First, melting lowers the height of the ice sheet, then it is exposed to the warmer air found at lower altitudes, and that in turn causes further melting. Importantly, one co-author of that study says its findings show destabilization of the Greenland ice sheet is already underway, and there will be substantially increased melting in the near future, and that, finally, brings us back to Antarctica again, where a separate study out last month said the acceleration of Antarctic ice loss in recent decades may already mark the beginning of a self-sustaining and irreversible period of ice sheet retreat. That's based on historical ice sheet debris, which reveals patterns behind eight episodes of ice sheet destabilization across recent millennia that could also apply now. The Nature Communications Journal study found that in the eight previous episodes, mass Antarctic ice sheet destabilization switched on within only a decade or two, with bursts of iceberg calving causing the sheet itself to destabilize within only a few years each time before continuing for many centuries, according to a press release published on Eureka Alert. The same study also found that sea levels responded to these tipping points accordingly, also rising for several centuries and up to a millennium in some cases. One study co-author, Zoe Thomas, summarized why we should worry. If it just takes one decade to tip a system like this, that's actually quite scary, because if the Antarctic ice sheet behaves in the future like it did in the past, we must be experiencing the tipping right now. Climate change isn't the only factor melting the Thwaites Glacier, according to a new study from the Earth Communications and Environment Journal. Rather, the Earth itself may also be warming the massive block of Antarctic ice, which is colloquially known as the Doomsday Glacier. 
According to the study, the crust beneath West Antarctica is between 10 to 15 miles or 17 to 25 kilometers thick, compared with around 25 miles or 40 kilometers in the east, and this means that substantially more heat from below can access the west than can access the east. The researchers found that a geothermal heat flow of up to 150 milliwatts per square meter can occur beneath Thwaites Glacier, according to the study's lead author. Ultimately, the temperature on the underside of the glacier is dependent on a number of factors, including whether the ground consists of compact, solid rock, or of meters of water-saturated sediment, according to one of the study's co-authors, Karsten Gohl. It was already known that hidden rivers of relatively warm seawater cutting across the glacier's underbelly, plus the effects of unmitigated climate change, which warms both the air and the ocean, had caused massive melting. However, Gohl, a geophysicist, says that in addition to these factors, large amounts of geothermal heat can lead, among other things, to the bottom of the glacier bed no longer freezing completely or to a constant film of water forming on its surface. Both of these effects can ultimately result in the ice masses sliding more easily over the ground and into the ocean, causing rises in water levels. Science Magazine reports that Antarctica's doomsday glacier is melting faster than expected and could raise global sea levels by up to 65 centimeters. With a surface area the size of Britain and a depth of up to 4 kilometers, Thwaites Glacier is called a doomsday glacier because of its projected impact on the rise of sea levels. Data was collected by the uncrewed submarine RAN that made its way under the glacier. The drone submarine found that currents of warm water are finding their way deep into the ocean under the ice shelf. The fact that so much warm water is finding its way to the base of the glacier is alarming glaciologists. That's because the warm water is melting away the pillars at the landward side on which the glacier is anchored. The fear is that, if the ice pillars collapse, large areas of ice would break off into the ocean, causing the ice to melt faster and causing more ice to flow into the ocean from the land-based part of the glacier. The 2017 calving of the A68 iceberg from Antarctica's Larsen Sea ice shelf was likely caused by thinning ice melange, the mix of wind-blown snow, iceberg debris, and frozen seawater that normally acts to glue rifts together with larger blocks. That's according to a new study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which found the circulation of ocean water beneath ice shelves and radiative warming from above gradually deteriorates the ice melange. Counterintuitively, if the ice shelves themselves thin, rifts tend to heal, with average annual widening rates dropping from 79 to 22 meters or 259 to 72 feet. Additionally, if both the shelves and the melange thinned, this also slowed rift widening. Only when the melange thinned separately to the ice shelf was rift widening found to increase from an average annual rate of 76 to 112 meters or 249 to 367 feet. The reason for that is the ice melange starts out much thinner than the ice shelf itself, so when it thins down to 10 or 15 meters thick, it becomes akin to water, allowing the ice shelf rifts to be released and start to crack. The study's lead author, Eric Larauer, cited by SciTech Daily, says this idea explains why the A68 iceberg was able to break from the Larsen Sea ice shelf in the dead of the Antarctic winter, because even in winter, warmer ocean water can reach the melange from below. Previously, scientists had thought such large iceberg calving events in the Antarctic Peninsula were caused by hydrofracturing, according to Larauer, whereby melt pools on the surface allow water to seep down through the cracks in the ice shelf, which expand when the water freezes again. But this would not be possible in the dead of winter, with no melt pools present. The study then partially explains how ice shelves can start retreating and becoming unstable decades before hydrofracturing could act on them, and this, according to one of the study's co-authors, means we may need to rethink our estimates about the timing and extent of sea level rise from polar ice loss, i.e., it could come sooner and with a bigger bang than expected. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.